Hey everyone, Angus Wong here. And um, before we get into the meat of the video, I want to take a moment to kind of tell you a story of my origin and how I got started with astrophotography and why the William Optics Cat Series <coughs> has a special place in my heart. Um, when I was starting the hobby, I was actually transitioning from a failed attempt at visual astronomy with a 700 uh, millimeters reflector, reflector. And it failed for me because I didn't have the skills to find objects on my own using such a, such a long focal length and I kept getting lost. So I knew that for my very first astrophotography telescope, I wanted something with much, much lower focal length so that I, I would be much more zoomed out and um, actually be able to learn the night sky easier. And like many of you who are trying to get into the hobby or already in the hobby, I stumbled across a very popular YouTube channel called Astro Backyard. And first of all, I want to thank Ashley and the team at Astro Backyard for getting back to me. And I watched one of your original video on the, uh, back then, brand new William Optics Red Cat 51. And I thought it was the perfect scope for me. So I, I started to do more research on the telescope and I found out that this was basically plug and play, ready to go. You just attach it to your camera and you can start imaging. You don't have to worry about back focus or field flattener or any of that nonsense. It was just ready to go, easy to use. And I've come to realize that I also appreciate the look and feel of wide field astrophotography. To be able to fit multiple deep sky objects in the same frame really lets me appreciate the distance between these objects and the vastness of universe and the haunting loneliness that is the universe. And I can't believe that one year after starting my own journey, one year after getting my very first astrophotography telescope, the William Optics Space Cat 51, I would be reviewing the brand new William Optics Red Cat 71. Stay tuned. want to thank William from William Optics for sending me this unit to do a review. Actually, I'll be doing several reviews and have several videos about it. Um, and no, I am not sponsored by William Optics, nor was I compensated for, you know, reviewing this brand new Redcat 71. So everything that you hear and see from me will be my own opinion on this beautiful <laughs> Red Cat 71. I mean, obviously you can tell that I'm excited because um, this, this telescope 
was I believe it was it was announced before I even got into the hobby um, and the moment that I got into the hobby a year ago I heard rumors of the bigger 71 so the fact that it's here I'm super excited and I want to thank uh, William Optics and I want to thank William specifically for setting this out to me for a review now quick note about the way that I do my videos and the way I review stuff I will never ever have a segment where I sort of do an unboxing, uh, if you will, because I think that for anybody that spends this amount of money in telescopes or anything else in general, I would imagine that you want that unboxing experience unique to yourself. So that's why I will never ever do an unboxing video in my, in my videos because I don't want to take that experience away from you guys. I mean, if you ask me, and I'm spending X amount of dollars on these expensive telescopes, yeah, I want that unboxing moment all to myself. So if you're looking for contents like that, um, I'm sorry, you'll never find that from me or this channel. So if you like sort of unboxing stuff, um, I would recommend you go somewhere else. All right. So let's actually dive into the Red Cat 71 and what it's like to handle it. Obviously, um, one of the major selling point of the original 51 was the portability. Um, and I have it in this configuration where the Duchio is already extended. Um, and as you can tell, the Red Cat 71 is significantly, is significantly larger so in my opinion uh, when it comes to portability the new 71 threw that out the window but that is to be expected because the aperture of the new red cat it's 71 millimeters and when you have a larger aperture you're gonna have a larger telescope that's just the way it is like all William Optics products, you can expect that the Red Cat 71 will come with actually all of the accessories that you need to start imaging and mount onto your, uh, your equatorial mount. It comes with a guy scope saddle or simply a handlebar for easy, uh, ease of use and easy to carry. And also comes with a very long, I, I haven't measured how long this is, but this is this is long enough. I mean, this is like the size of my forearm, basically. Um, a very long and well thought out uh, dovetail plate. And yeah, so you can expect all that when you get your Red Cat 71. So I can actually quickly sum up the Red Cat 71. And I can sum it up by saying that this is astrophotography ready. But however, if I'm going to say that, I will also say that I highly would not recommend you to get this for visual use because, well, at 348 or 350 millimeters of focal length, frankly, you're not going to, you're not, you're not going to be able to see much uh, visually. So, but having said all that, the reason why I think this Red Cat 71 is basically astrophotography ready. I mean, they might as well just call this an astrograph. Um, some of the designs here is so well thought out for astrophotography that, you know, it's, <laughs> it's been a pleasure to use. Like all William Optics products and all of their refractors, the William Optics Red Cat 71 comes with a built-in image rotator so it will be very easy for you to orient and frame your target to the way that you want it to. So the 71 actually retains a lot of the design language from the 51. That also means that you get the helical focuser from the 51. However, this has been beefed up significantly. And to operate the focuser, unlike the 51, there is no locking ring on the 71. Instead, the locking mechanism is actually built into the Duchio, and I'll demonstrate. You need to loosen up the Duchio first, 
And then you can rotate your focuser to find focus. Once you found focus, rotate and lock your dushio and your focuser will lock. And I mentioned earlier that this Redcast 71 is built for astrophotography. And you can see that by the fact that on the helical focuser itself, there is already a provision. If you guys can't see it, I'll, 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 I'll zoom in and post. Um, there is already a provision built in to accept an electronic focuser right here, right on the helical focuser. And William has told me that there will be a motorized focuser in the future. Now, before I stop talking about the focuser, I will have to say that personally, I'm not a fan of the form factor of a helical focuser, at least not for astrophotography, because I don't like to have to put my hands on my equipment once everything is connected and hooked up to the mount. And same story with the 71. I don't like to have to put my hands on the telescope to find focus. Um, but, you know, it's not a deal breaker because you usually have to find focus once, you lock it, and you're good to go. It doesn't take, a, it doesn't take any more time than a typical rack and pinion. Um, and I still maintain that this is a great, great and smooth focuser to use. Sticking with the theme of this telescope being astrophotography ready and purpose built for it, I'm going to talk about the filter drawer. Now, you may or may not know that you want your filter to be as close to your camera sensor as possible to minimize any sort of, you know, artifacts coming from the filter itself. And they've actually thought about this. Now, obviously they cannot control the kind of camera that you're using and the kind of accessories that you'll be using in front of your camera sensor, but they purposely designed this telescope so that if you are going to use the filter drawer that comes with the telescope, they put it at the very, very back end of the telescope. That means that if you don't use any additional accessories, your filter, whatever filter you, that you're going to use, it's going to be as close to your camera sensor as possible or as close as this telescope allows it to be. And let me demonstrate. I'm going to take off this filter drawer. And this is where a clever design comes in. Typically, most filter drawer, because they, again, they want your filter to be as close to your camera as possible, the actual connection to the filter will be like deep down in here. And to operate such a uh, filter drawer, you kind of have to stick your finger in there and then, you know, spin it and try to try to maneuver your filter in and out. And I never like doing that. I find it to be a nuisance and annoyance because I could easily scratch or smudge my filter, just sticking my hand in there, my finger in there. But this is where a clever design comes in. And they didn't have to do this, but they did it anyways. This is a two-piece. By the way, I don't mind um, equipment having a lot of threads because that's a lot of security, and I like that. This comes apart. Here's a filter at the very end of this filter drawer, which is at the very end of the telescope. The fact that they thought about this, that says a lot about where they were going with this when they designed this telescope. Now, I don't have to stick my finger in here to operate the filter. I can take this two-piece back end of the, of the Redcast 71 and just easily operate and remove whatever filter I want or install whatever filter I want. And this was one of the, when I realized this, I didn't care for the actual specs of the Red Cat. I didn't care that this gave me focal ratio of 4.9. 
I didn't care that this gave me a focal length of 348 or 350 or whatnot. I care about the fact that they thought about what an astrophotographer want, what an astrophotographer wants from a telescope. That you know they want something that will easily accept an electronic focuser down the row, and that if somebody like me who isn't using additional accessories to install and remove filter, that this will not be a chore. Um, and that's why I say some of the designs here, it's so geared and perfect for astrophotography that this is, this telescope, it's, it's, it's awesome to set up. It really is. Sorry, I'm sort of, I, I knew this already when I first got the telescope and I tried it out, but the fact that I'm, I'm just playing around with like this, this two piece design. I mean, this is so simple and they really didn't have to do this, but they did it anyways. That really says a lot. One last piece about what makes the CAT series in general very special is that both the original 51 and this new 71, these are Petsville design refractor. What does that mean? It means that the optics, now I, I'm not gonna go into details about this because I, I don't know my way around optics to be honest. And I'm not gonna talk about something that I don't know. But what I do know is that because of the Petsville, of the Petsville design, you don't have to worry about field flatteners. Doesn't matter what camera you're using, whether it's DSLR, or a dedicated astro camera. When you have everything connected and set up properly, on your end, of course, you will get flat stars from edge to edge. And I will show uh, a picture here that I took a couple nights ago when I first got the Red Cat 71. And what I'm showing here is a corner shot of a of an image now the i've done here is that i re, i use pics insights to remove the background i've done nothing else and i'm showing you a corner's edge and what you see here are flat stars all the way out to the edge now i may have some camera sensor tilt but that's on me uh, it has nothing to do with the refractor and you know that's why Petsville design scopes are relatively expensive, but for the convenience of not having to deal with back focus, I'm, I'm telling you right now that if you haven't dealt with back focus, that could easily take you weeks, if not months to figure out because I, I, I got stuck in back focus hell myself and um, the fact that using this Red Cat 71 or the original 51, I don't have to worry about back focusing. It's, it's awesome. Like I said, this is a telescope that is ready to go for astrophotography right out of the... Oh yeah, and before I forget to mention, um, damn near zero, actually no, zero <laughs> chromatic aberrations from what I can tell. Um, yeah. Ooh. I can't stop looking at this thing. It's, it's, <laughs> I'm so sorry, but it is gorgeous. It's just absolutely gorgeous. All right, let's, so, let's go outside and uh, let's check out the clouds, shall we? <laughs> uh, You know something that's awesome when you've thought about what you want to say and you've played with it for a couple of nights already, maybe two or three nights. And I knew what I wanted to say in this video. But the fact that I'm still giddy, just looking at it and talking about it, that really tells you a lot about the way that they designed this telescope. Like I said, I really don't care about the specs. 
f4.9 350 348 millimeters focal length i don't care about all that i care about how well designed this is for an astrophotographer and <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry that I'm giddy, but I, I can't get over just how much of a joy it is to use. Um, and yeah, let's go outside and take a look at some clouds. <laughs> All right, we are out in my yard and it doesn't look optimistic. Um, I don't know how this video is going to end because I don't know when I can actually image with this again. But, um, oh, uh, well, let me just give you a uh, weather report. It's cloudy. With a chance of more clouds. And lots of it. Um, I think... San Francisco is going to be under underneath a blanket of clouds for the next coming days. So I have no idea when, when I can image again, but I still want to talk a little bit more about the Redcast 71 now that I have it mounted on my mount. Um, I want to point out the ring system here. They're really well thought out because you'll notice that just like the 51, the rings are a little bit elevated. So you have almost zero chance of hitting any part of your mount with your telescope. And I also want to note that on the side of the rings, you have kitty paws. And I'm pretty sure that each of these kitty paws will lower your focal ratio a full stop. So the fact that they have two kitty paws right here it's lowering the focal ratio by two stops. <laughs> I hope you guys know I'm kidding, but I just love these little subtle designs like that. I, just, I think it's cute and I think it looks awesome. Um, but since I don't know when I can image again, I will say that I was able to take the scope out for a few nights when I got it. And it's so weird that um, the night actually cleared up for me when I got the scope. Um, but, well, I guess it's hitting me hard right now. But um, I was able to, to image uh, maybe two sessions and I got some decent pictures with it, even though I don't think they're complete because I live under Bordeaux 9 skies and for me to complete an image, I need a lot of integration time and I simply don't have that kind of time right now um, because of the clouds. Um, but I will still show you guys because I think despite not being complete, I think those images out of the Red Cat 71 looks amazing. And for one of the object, um, it's, not, it's not a big name target. Uh, lately, I've been sort of surfing Stellarium and I've been hopping from region to region, and if I see something that looks kind of interesting on Stellarium, name or no name, I just point my HQ5 over there and start imaging. And one of these pictures, I believe is called NGC6914. If I'm wrong, I'll correct it in post. Um, but uh, the images look amazing already. Um, and I just want to, I guess, well, if you hear me say this, then you know that I, I wasn't able to get any more sessions in the coming days. So I guess I'll wrap up by saying that, you know, if you are an astrophotographer or you want to get into astrophotography and you want a scope that is easy to use, ready to go right out of the box, or if you're already an established astrophotographer and you want something that is well designed, well thought out, and once again, as I mentioned earlier, I don't care. Oh my God, the sun is right on my face. Once again, I don't care about the specs. I don't care that this has focal ratio of 4.9. I don't care that this has focal length of 350-ish. I care about the overall telescope and how well designed this is for astrophotography. So if you're that person 
And if you think, you know, having a 350 millimeters focal length telescope makes a lot of sense in your collection, or you want to start with this, I highly recommend it. I really think that if you want to take pictures, pictures of the night sky, you cannot go wrong with this. If I were you, I would try to get one. And with that, thank you, Bird. I'm going to end now. I know I've been loud. Um, okay, almost done here. <laughs> uh, the birds are telling me to shut up, so I'm going to shut up. So with that, I, uh, <laughs> I hope that you guys will have a great day. I hope that you guys will have a great night when you go out to image. I'm ending, bird. <sighs> and with that, I wish you all good health and clear skies. I will have more videos with this. I will show you a session with this, I promise. And I'm sorry for being so giddy because I'm so excited about this telescope. All right, anyways, take care, bye.